So I wanted to bring something to people's attention. Probably the first time in history that we had a cover story seamlessly transition into the actual manga. They've had cover stories close. Like when the Pound cover story was going on, it was very closely tied to Wano because we were trying to figure out what was going on or what happened because Jimbei had just come back to Wano. So now in the Pound cover story, it's like, okay, these are the residuals. What's happening? We got some insight. And so now, Oda's kind of in his bag, okay? He's in his duffel because this is selfish, but I wanted this badly. And the reason why I wanted this was it added so much context and it gave Oda an out in regards to adding content directly relating to the story. And that's what he's doing. I, I thought, it's magnifique. Putting mention in the cover story, Blackbeard Pirates attacking Law. Next cover story, you see how Kiji, Van Auger, and Pudding. So a few things, okay, before I get too carried away. This 100% confirms that Aokiji and Van Auger, I think, were in Whole Cake Island. Secondly, what the hell is Aokiji wearing? Now, I don't hate the top as much. It's elegant. But come on, the previous drip was a lot better. I guess Blackbeard, he has a dress code. Okay, he's like, okay, we gotta look at least formal. We never know when we gotta pop up on somebody, okay? So I want you to dress formal, dress to impress, because we never know when we're gonna show up on camera and do what we gotta do. That's what they're doing. So the drip was cool. I like the scarf. And this chapter almost pretty much confirmed that Aokiji is a member of the Blackbeard Pirates. I don't like it. So is he the 10th? I don't know. If he's the 10th, it's unfair for everybody else. And everyone acknowledges that. Everyone knows, hey, Kuzan might be a bit too, a bit too strong to be on this crew, right? And we'll talk about Kuzan a bit more later, but I don't know. I, I, Alright, alright. Last chapter, I was all for Van Auger's goatee. This chapter is looking a little nasty. I mean, hopefully you can clean it up a little bit. Anyway, amazing, amazing transition in regards to the cover story to the actual story i guess it's time to get to the actual story now i talked about this in my prediction video i said oh now is a chance for you to show how competent law's crew is because everyone is shitting on them even your editors unconfirmed but law's crew they've been a travesty not even beppo in wano with the moon being out while everyone else is going so long he did not go so long himself so i had no faith necessarily in law's crew but i did leave open the possibility that they were like luka Doncic on the maps everything is revolving around law and law basically got a bunch of crewmates that's gonna hype him up and support him how john bum jumped in front of law i am now tempted to call him by his real name because he, he deflected van auger's bullet now another question off of that is if i'm a bullet user right and i fire a bullet and it doesn't work then what am i throwing my gun next you have the warp warp food sir you need to go down there because the bullet isn't working it didn't work and it's like i'm a gun fan in regards to the story i'm not gonna get into the politics of guns and yeah in anime i like people using guns think it's pretty cool right everybody likes devil may cry and even bayonetta i don't know if that's appropriate to bring up bayonetta right now a lot of controversy around it i've always felt like guns were undervalued in one piece even ben beckman who we presume to be one of the if not the strongest gun user next to blackbeard because he got pistols for whatever reason when we saw him fighting he's swinging and knocking people out with his rifle do the bullets work i mean kizaru was scared enough to say whoa i've been a big one but it's kind of like my g you know what I'm saying? i guess to the law fight Pedaling like this can be chaotic, but I think that's the intent. Think about what's going on. We have Blackbeard that can use earthquakes and darkness fighting Law, who has maybe the most broken power. Okay, I'm not gonna go that far in anime. The most broken devil fruit in the series. Possibly, quite possibly. I absolutely loved when Blackbeard didn't have any idea as to what was going on. He was genuinely confused, as was I. It took me a little bit to siphon through exactly what was going on. My main takeaway from this chapter is that Law is busted. I'm still trying to cipher how all of his moves work and i will create a guide i guess to the punk to the punk hazard to the opop no me because this is just ridiculous and before i say anything else shout out to shachi and penguin because i don't know if anybody's stock rose higher than those two after this chapter maybe laws as well because that was impressive. And also, speaking of law, subscribe to BDA Law, okay? Maybe you've watched a few videos, you enjoy the content, you didn't realize you're not subscribed because you just go through the homepage. Now's the time to subscribe, drop a like, that lets me know you enjoy the content. Let's get back to regularly scheduled programming. So something to pick up on here is that Law used his previous experience with fighting someone like Big Mom and taking away her mobility. So the first thing he did was try to take away Blackbeard's mobility by getting rid of Stronger. Smart. And Law didn't waste any time. He went directly to the R room and he used Amputate. And Amputate is an amazing move because it's a cutting technique that literally takes off a limb without actually cutting you. With R room, it seems like Law can somewhat throw where his sword affects. But something that's lost in translation that this moment told me after the R room, after 
after Blackbeard's like, whoa, 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 I know you could do that. After that moment, I was like, okay, well, Blackbeard isn't necessarily aware of all of Law's techniques. He probably doesn't know anything about the immortality surgery. Blackbeard is somebody that we presume to know much, like a lot. Immortality surgery, I don't think he knows about that because he would be more after Law's devil fruit. All he wants are the poneglyphs. Just give me the rubbings, G. Just give me the rubbings so I can get out of here. Sounds like a different type of transaction, but that's all he wants. I promise you. All credits to Shachi here, right? And Shachi apparently is from Swallow Island. And what he did here, I think we understand why he could be a throat goat, <laughs> right? Like he just inhaled some water and sent a hyper beam to destroy all the, the, the goddamn apples. It's it's impressive. Something that was also revealed that I had no idea was something that the law pirates were adept at. Sea battles. Oda has mentioned time and time again that he would like to draw more sea battles. I guess that's a missed opportunity and that's why he hasn't showcased just how dominant Law's crew can be. But they're saying, don't mess with us in the sea battle. That's where we thrive. I'm like, okay, this started on the seas. Take care of it then. But it seems like they were ambushed. Okay, and now they're showcasing just how reliable they are. I talked about it, man. I said, if there's any opportunity, now is a chance. But I wasn't too confident considering I felt the same way when Kid and Killer were leaving Udon. I said, well, this is an opportunity for Oda to highlight that relationship, that crew, and give us some more from that. I thought it was an opportunity. Didn't really go anywhere. Fair. But it was an opportunity for Oda to give us a bit more with those characters. I think more than anything, I appreciate the chemistry revolving around Law's crew that they understand their role and Law is the prize, <laughs> okay? And so you can't let him get hurt. John Bart jumping in front of the bullet to block Van Auger. It tells exactly how they value their captain. It's completely different from the Straw Hats. Damn near polar opposite where they feel like, oh, if he got it, he can take care of himself. Yes, they're going to save him in moments where they need to save him. To be honest, they're at a place where you can't even reach the captain without going through his officers, his top officers. But they know Luffy can take care of himself they're not jumping in front of, they're not doing that luffy's fine with law they're like no we have to protect the captain reminiscent of whitebeard is law turning into are we saying that law is, the, is john bart someone doing something like what Josu did to, i'm just saying if there's anybody that's going to be the white beard of this era he has a good case all right law uses his most devastating attack i believe well one of them Shock Willie. Okay, this is Blackbeard's MO. If we go back to every single altercation Blackbeard has been in, early in the fight, he gets dominated. And if he goes against the wrong person, he can get one shot like with Magellan. Every single person has gotten a hit in on Blackbeard. This is not anything different. And especially against Law, somebody who has the ability to catch you off guard, Law's best chance was the first few moments of the fight. And he knew that. That's why he went awakening right away. What are the limitations of that currently? We don't know. We just know Law has leveled up considerably ever since Do Flamingo. Law is impressing me and impressing a lot of people. I did a poll, Zora versus Law, and I tell you guys what the results were at the end. You could say it was somewhat shocking, I, you know, it's pretty much what I expect. I like Van Auger's demeanor, man. He's calm, cool, collected. He's a thinker of the group, saying Blackbeard went in half cock. Going forward, anything that I do, I'm going to do it full cock because that is how you approach things. Full cock. He's asking Blackbeard, like, we should probably retreat. Blackbeard, being the type of man he is, says, What? We don't ever retreat. We go full force and finish everything we start. Retreating? We never do that. Huh. That's interesting. It's funny because Law says as well in this chapter, it's a pretty raw deal hauling around so many anchors. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. That's how we felt about your crew for a long time. I guess Soda is just making it somewhat ironic with what Law is saying. It. And Blackbeard said the weakness is worth the trade off, especially when you get an ice man who can pretty much deal with water if anyone falls in. We're fine. And to be honest, if I was a pirate yeah i'd probably want a significant amount of fruit users on my crew maybe a few fishmen just in case they fall into the water and for underwater battles but yeah i would want hella devil fruit users because they're freaking powerful you see the black bear pirates what they doing apparently there was some misinformation being spread because leakers for the spoilers were apparently saying that pudding said that big mom is dead well upon reading the chapter she did not say those words at all she's saying well if she's still alive you're dead and like wait pudding do you remember your mother have they used the mem mem fruit on you we'll see what happens with big mom but i she's 100 percent not dead she's not dead guys i like the reputation blackbeard is getting though basically implying that a lot of people feel like he's the strongest around of course these people are biased because they're just fodder on his crew but he's pretty up there but in laws hanging with them that's the crazy part the dialogue about new eras happening when old legends are torn down it makes me think about just how things transpired in the past like the changing of the guard how did that occur it hasn't been that long since roger died right like people still remember him and so the changing of the guard is interesting considering the tournament that roger 
inspired, this era is basically more difficult than anything they've had to experience, considering just how many pirates started after Roger and they've been chasing Roger's treasure. Isn't One Piece amazing? The Law and Blackbeard fight ends with Blackbeard using Kurosu, and the entire time I'm wondering why was he waiting to use it? But I don't know, the fight would have ended. That's how Boa Hancock got taken care of. Of course, she wasn't paying attention. So I'm really interested to see how Law takes care of Kurosu. That's Blackbeard's trump card. If we're being honest, taking away your double fruit, whew, I don't think Law is going to be Blackbeard. I think there's literally a 0% chance. Considering as well, I mentioned I would bring up Kuzan again. The person who is waiting on that ship, I presume, Kuzan, unless he's out on another mission to acquire something else, he's on that ship. And this is a point in the story where Blackbeard has to get the Poneglyphs. He has to show that he is on Luffy's level in regards to having someone that can read the Poneglyphs and also having the goddamn Poneglyphs. So this is Oda establishing that threat and it's pretty genius. I've mentioned the pudding thing throughout the years just saying, hey, can't not think about that. It was in a story for a reason. Putting in our third eye, of course, mentioned in Whole Cake, brought up again in Wano and Blackbeard. How the hell did he know about it? Again, I think Kuzan and their plan, it's a lot going on. Kuzan is trying to have leverage against Blackbeard and be in a position where he can disrupt his organization. But Blackbeard isn't an idiot. Blackbeard understands who's there. That's why you got him changing clothes and shit. Like, nah, you're going to dress like me, Kuzan of the Blackbeard Pirates. It's getting really scary. Something that was annoying is Oda showing Akainu. And y'all know I'm an Akainu fan. It's starting to ring hollow. Akainu Again, oh, Blackbeard and Law on Winter Island, wherever the hell that is. And all the kind who's like, damn, damn, damn. And quite frankly, I'm tired of it. If you're tired of it, imagine how we all are. Do something. But Oda's telling us, hey, 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 chill out. The reason why he can't do anything is because he's stuck he's the fleet admiral this is what comes with his responsibilities i do think that at some point Akainu is going to say forget this i'm out i'm going to go do something because just the flashing to what he's saying is annoying this is going on a lot longer than than i than i wanted it to so um let's uh let's try to speed through this a bit shall we yeah so kuma like i've been saying perception versus reality people are gonna be like bro you always say that because it's goddamn true and it's proving true again Kuma is not what you thought he was. Not a tyrant. Not this bad person. Look at the images. What Bonnie saw of her father and what it actually showed from Jinbei's perspective. It's like when we see Shanks from different perspectives or Luffy from different perspectives. It's never what we think they are. And we cannot trust the world government. We cannot ever trust them. Kuma was supposedly made an example of because of how he was tyrannically ruling Sorbet Kingdom. And so therefore he agreed to these things. And then he agreed to the body modification. But now we're getting more context. Well, apparently he agreed to it because Vegapunk took an interest in him because he was sentenced to life. The story's changing a little bit. I thought he was used in that way because they were making an example out of him. Not because his body was special, not because Vegapunk took a liking to him. So what they put out is going to be different than what it actually is. Everything to cater to their narrative. Makes sense. It's smart. You can't deny that, but what the hell? Kuma was forced to accept, and that could have been due to Bonnie, but whatever situation they put him in, he was forced to accept. He had no choice. And here goes Oda again with the special wording no you're not saying exactly what it is special race what special race is it just black people right darker people kuma blackbeard cobra people that have similar hairstyles i don't know it's it's starting to become very eerie with these type of people in the special bodies doesn't mean blackbeard and kuma they're similar that's why they could operate on them has blackbeard been operated on that's why you can eat two devil fruits we really got to figure these things out but we're at a place especially as we get deeper into egghead where we're finding out more about the backstory like what's going on behind the scenes the true vegapunk i even talked about the straw hats more than likely they would change outfits the other group because the previous group changed outfits i mean this made so much sense the final part with vegapunk talking about dragon and saying hey well dragon i might die soon what does death really mean to someone like vegapunk well i said that vegapunk being as smart as he is he should see this thing coming judge was smart as hell but he was gullible vegapunk based on everything he's done for the world government more than anyone he should understand that his time is coming to an end or his usefulness is coming to an end and so the death could mean that or the death could mean the end of my existence that specific person chaka but i think vegapunk has evolved past just one person <laughs> clearly he's more of an entity a corporation that's why they're gonna have vega burgers vega force vega sandwiches vega bbls they're all going to vary vegapunk is going to outlive physical existence but personally i don't think he's gonna die maybe one of the vegapunks die right whatever that means whatever they are but i think he understands that his usefulness has come to an end maybe he is in charge of creating that uranus like thing that we think it 
is. And if you create something like that, that can completely eradicate an entire country, you pretty much know, all right, they have the Seraphim, they have this, this machinery, they don't need me anymore. But who are they gonna use? Is there Judas in the midst? Is there someone, one of the Vegapunks that feel like they are real and they feel like they should be the number one punk and they have conspired against Vegapunk to turn on him. There's always a Judas in the midst. Always. There's always someone that's willing to turn. Who is that person on Egghead? We gotta wait and see. But guys, give me your thoughts. How do you feel about the chapter? Another exceptional chapter. Another way of Oda just showing us just the intricacies of what's going on with Egghead and I don't know, man. It, <laughs> it's looking like it could be a top 10 at least top five right, i'm going too far now the results of the poll thought i forgot about that the results of the poll like who is stronger after this chapter zoro versus law zoro came in with the whopping you know what stick a pin let's double back tomorrow huh let's let's do that <laughs> make sure to like the video if you did subscribe to the channel for more content like this follow me on twitter at brogody ace follow me on instagram at brogody.ace thank you to my patrons i appreciate you guys so much again guys be sure to like and subscribe thank you to my members as well and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace Okay, I start doubting me, I felt lost. I